Welcome to the Introvert Sisters, the podcast by introverts for introverts, hosted by Sharon and Lisa, two INFJs with a lot to say. Hi, I'm Sharon. And I'm Lisa. And together, we're the Introvert Sisters. Welcome to our podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so happy to be back with you. You know, uh, we've had some interesting times, haven't we? Yes. And uh, we're going to kick things right off with introverts uniting separately. Yes. Yeah, so I have to. We're going to talk about. We're going to talk about those interesting times. That's it. We're going to talk about those interesting times. Because since we last recorded, I have been through Hurricane Elsa. Now, I have oh, to geez. say, this is not the first hurricane I have been through, although it's the right. first proper one in Barbados, because I had the bad fortune to be in Florida when Irma hit. <laughs> right? This was, this was uh, like a couple years ago? Yeah, 2017-ish. Yeah. Okay. But anyway... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Barbados is usually out of the loop when it comes to hur- hurricanes, thankfully. But, you know, they thought this one was going to hit us and hit us. It did. It came up from the south and I live in the south. Now, I have to say we were very lucky. OK, but but hold on, hold on, because it didn't actually start off even being a hurricane. Weren't you supposed to, like, get some heavy rain and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, my God, <laughs> it was a tropical storm. Yeah, But by the time it made landfall, it was a cat- category one hurricane. Mm-mm. But, you know, they always tell us to be prepared. And I have to say that... But were you? Yeah, we always take this very seriously, you know, at the start of the hurricane season, which apparently you remember that the hurricane season used to run from July to about October. Apparently now it runs from... You know, June- we have to do this. We have to do this. Yes. June too soon. July standby. Stand by. August, August come it must. September, right? remember, October, October, all over. all over. But that is out the window now. Because yeah. apparently I was reading just this morning that the hurricane season now starts on June the 1st mm. and runs, well, who knows? It could run all the way into November for all I know. Because yeah, we so have, now it's, so now, now, now it's June monsoon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, but, you know, we've always taken it very seriously and always prepared. I mean, there are certain things that we have in the house year round, like we almost always have tuna and crackers. Yeah. In some yeah. quantities, not in the, not necessarily yeah. in the kind of quantities that would feed you for a week, but in some quantities so that you wouldn't starve. And then after the last storm hit in, I can't remember when it was, you know, mm-hmm. my husband went out and got some of these meal replacement things that they use. And so we have a, 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 a container of those. I mean, they taste a little weird, but, you know, if you were going, if what? it was that or starved. So, for example, it was um, tandoori rice or something like that was one of them. You know, pasta. These are, these are uh, just like, add water. Just... Oh. <laughs> yes. Now I get it. But we also always keep a couple of um, sets of, of water. Like, so we had 48 small bottles of water mm-hmm. and of course we have tank water tanks outside which mean right. we collect rain water what, what size what size are your tanks why are you asking me that when you know i'm spatially challenged <laughs> <laughs> right a big a big tank a big two, tank and a smaller two tank big, two big tanks where you can get water for things like um flushing toilets and and watering plants if they're in danger of suffering right right, right. And then we also also keep because, you know, a small island infrastructure being what it is, you know, sometimes the water goes off. So we usually have some bottles of water that you can mm-hmm. use for um, cooking and the kettle and things like that. So I would say that we were reasonably prepared and we're lucky in the sense that because our house is, is relatively recently built, it complies with the latest standards, which means that your roof has hurricane straps, which are supposed to stand up to a category five hurricane. You know, I don't know that I want to put it to the test, but. Right. You know. I was about to ask you a question and then another question. And then I realized you wouldn't know the answer to that one either. I was going to ask you what these straps are made of, but we'll just pretend that that question never came. <laughs> Let's pretend that question never happened. Um, never. 
Although, although actually, I think there's some kind of metal that was screwed to between the roof and the house. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's as, that, that is as much as I know. So, so, so you're, you know, you're, so you're, at, you're at home. You're at home expecting some heavy rain. Then all of a sudden, oh shoot, it's a hurricane. And then what? Well, like what? What time? What time did know, it hit? Did you feel a sense of impending panic? It like, hit like it hit early in the morning. It was windy. It was rainy. Um, then the power went out, you know, um, you know, the other good thing is that we have most of our electronics on surge protected things. Again, a lesson right. from the last storm, not, not something that we hadn't known before, but you know, they did what they were supposed to do last time, which means that the, all the old ones blew. So we replaced them with new ones. Right. Right. And so, and so there we were, you know, no power, um, and then the water went off at some point as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, we, we, you know, we made it work. We, you know, we got out, <laughs> we got out board games and, you know, we played things like Hungry Hippo and Jenga. Um, and I Spy, I heard. I Spy was, the, it was an evening thing. And, you know, who yeah. plays I Spy when you could barely see, but anyway, <laughs> you know, so. You I know, barely spy. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was interesting. So. That was kind of how the Friday went. And then, you know, we, we, you know, when we ran out of steam, we, we kind of, we kind of went to bed. One of my favorite things that we did was we tried to play Uno with a set of Harry Potter playing cards, which okay. was, it worked surprisingly well, okay. <laughs> worked surprisingly well. You know, Miss T came up with the rules because she, of course, remembered what you needed to remember, the basics. And right. so we did that as well. And then, and then that was that. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you can't deny, especially for people that work from home, leading into our next, uh, you know, topic, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. being without internet is extremely inconvenient, right? right. But luckily, because were you, were you able to coming, tell your clients? Because I knew it was coming, I, right. I was able to warn them. And, you know, I used the, I also, you know, just used, I don't have a data plan. So I paid, you know, extortionate rates to send out a couple of messages to people. You know, my phone had been topped up, so I had plenty of credit, um, most of which I used <laughs> over the course of the day to keep up with updates, you know, check in every, right. so every couple of hours to see what was going on, you know. Um, so, yeah, I was able to tell people, I put a, just put an auto message on my, um, on my, on my email and mm -hmm. send out personal messages to a couple of people where I actually had projects, you know, on the go. And, and so I was able to do that. Yeah, and then that was that. And so it eventually calmed down. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, then you had to wait for the restoration of services. Right. Well, was it, was it during, during the, um, the storm itself? Like, was it scary? I mean, did the house shake? Or were you like, eh, okay, this is not... Well, compared to what you've experienced before, it was compared not too to, scary. Compared to how things blew when we were looking at Irma, the, you know, the trees didn't bend quite as far. I right. mean, you know, it was it was um, awesome in the original sense of the world word, you know, because, you know, there was Mother Nature, you know, having her finest tantrum. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, things were blowing. But but of course, you know, where we were, I think in our particular street, we didn't really see the worst of it. You know what I mean? The, you know, people had secured their stuff. Um, you know. And so there wasn't a lot of stuff flying down the road or anything like right. that. Right. You know, we were in and I think we felt relatively safe. You know, we did in subsequent days experience a little generator envy because people who had generator, gas power generators were able to get, you know, some things back on. And of course, there was a concern about would the food in the fridge survive, which most of it thankfully did, you know. Oh, good, good. You know, yeah. um, and and yes, but we did have also um, my husband had purchased at some time that we'd forgotten about a burner that works with a gas canister. So we were able to boil water and at least have, you know, tea and coffee. Nice. Oh, that's um, good. We, we um, you, you know, Miss T cooked some eggs one day as well. And then we heated up this meal replacement. But we also. Um, I think what we also did after that is once people started reopening sort of a day and a half later, we were able to go to places and, you know, and get a meal, 
So right. you would have one right. hot meal and then you would you would survive the rest. And we were able to go somewhere and get access to Internet so that we could, mm-hmm. you know, keep up to date with what was happening. So, yes, I mean, there was an yeah, experience. Thank, thank goodness. Thank goodness that, you know, of course, everybody that you guys are OK and, and so on. I mean, I've heard. I mean, you guys were lucky. Very lucky. Said. Very because, lucky. I mean, I've you know, heard people have lost their homes and and their roofs and their their, their, their roof, their home, their, their possessions, possessions, their food, their, their everything. everything. I yeah. mean, no, no fatalities. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but yeah, it was it, it's been it's been dire for some people. And, you know, there are people as we speak just over a week later that still don't have their power back. Yeah. OK. No power, no water. <clears throat> Yeah. So, you know, I, you know, despite the inconvenience, I am not complaining because I feel like we were extremely lucky. Right. Extremely lucky, you know. So that was that. (laughs) Well, what a way to start summer, eh? What a way to start summer. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yes. yes, Yeah. I mean, we got, we got, and I hadn't wanted to say anything because, of course, it wasn't at the same scale <laughs> we we got some um some bad weather and um are you know are getting we're getting a little bit of a of a taste of elsa as well but you know we've had some you know broken branches on cars and um well not in my neighborhood but in some neighborhoods some power outages and so on um but so so far as far as i i know nothing as bad as what the caribbean has experienced so um, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But I've also I've also been sort of trying trying to to manage stress by not uh, looking at the you know the weather, the news, or whatever too much because it's all stressful. And a part of that stress, segue, segue, segue. <laughs> <laughs> a part of that stress is thinking about um, having to go back to the office, oh. right? And so like about a year ago, um, I don't know if you remember, well, of course you remember, but you and I had dropped an episode. We were, we were already putting our stake in the ground against um, <laughs> going back to the office. office. Right, right. So we, we dropped an episode, episode 18, called Why Introverts Love Working Remotely and Don't Miss the Office, you know? And we stand and, by that. <laughs> and we stand by that. And so, you know, now the world is like, it's opening up more fully and there are a lot of companies that are actually insisting that employees return to work. And let me just actually interject there. Return to work. I object to the, to that phrase. Yes. Because it's not like we've been sitting down at home filing our nails. No, you've been working and been things have been, been running. My ties. We have been, we have not been just here sipping, you know, tropical drinks and, and, and chilling and binging Netflix. No, right? because work has um, been happening work has been happening and the thing is the number of companies that have posted oh despite the pandemic we posted better than better than usual numbers our profits are up 300 percent it's like okay that's because people have been working so again language matters and i object to the phrase return to work now return to the to the office yes okay fine right so we have been working, but they're insisting that people return to, uh, to their office space. There are some, uh, some companies that are letting their employees choose. They're doing a hybrid model. Um, some, however, have embraced the work from home, work remote forever model, you know, like twi- Twitter and Slack. Can I just say- It makes sense. Yeah, given I was, I'm, surprised that, I'm surprised that Slack didn't have that already. <laughs> yeah, they should have had that. You know, you know that that seems like it goes with their whole thing exactly, exactly. anyway whatever yeah but um you know goldman sachs is a big one amazon and apple have decided that their employees have to go back to the office and you know there will be consequences and repercussions oh, if if uh if they don't you know and so you know this is a great sort of source of stress for me i know it's, it's a bit different for you of course because you have been working um freelance remote uh for For over a decade now yeah for quite for quite for quite a while um but i know that you understand it however i do i do i I do because you know i put in my time working in offices yeah and i know you know i have been in the cubicle farms i know what it's like 
and I yeah. and that and, and in fact that is why I have made the choice not to do that ever again if I can help it. <laughs> right? I mean, you know, honestly, working from home works for introverts on so many levels. Mm-hmm. And can I just say that you know, introverts have a lot to offer because we are, you know, we are deep thinkers, you know, we're great mm-hmm. planners. You know, we're great researchers and, you know, all successful teams need those people. And so isn't it better to put us in the kind of environments in which we thrive Mm -hmm. rather than force us into places that actually actively militate against our success? Yeah, and and d- diminish our, our ability to to perform at, at our best. Right, because you know, yeah. working from home helps us to to focus. You know, you mm-hmm. can sit down and really just drill down on what you have to do without someone coming up disturbing you about something, without hearing the background noise, without hearing the the phones ringing, overhearing the conversations. And so on, mm-hmm. right? That and and we're just, we're very oh, good. We're very good at at single tasking, yes. right? Which, which which is important for certain certain kinds of work, particularly with what you and I do. You know, we're writers, and so mm-hmm. single tasking um, is kind of the, <laughs> the the bread and butter of what we do, and it's it's a requirement. It's a necessity. That ability to be able to focus and. Part of that is in, intrinsically driven, but part of it, yes, it absolutely has to do with your your environment. So, yeah, yeah, working, I agree, working from home makes it easier to focus, which then makes it easier for us to be more productive, which absolutely. is what companies want in the first place, right? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And of course, you know, crowds, crowds are anathema to most yeah. introverts, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, crowds on the commute, crowds in the office, crowds you know I remember one of the things that I loved in one of the places that you worked you know office space notwithstanding was that they had quiet rooms yes right because which you may, because which you may or may not have used which I may or may not have used but you know one has to recognize that uh you know introverts are going to do their best work in in quiet spaces right so avoiding yeah, like, crowds is crucial I'm like if you have an office and then you literally have to set up quiet space that should tell you something it should right it because should. you 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 know you know that people need it you know <laughs> stop trying to pretend otherwise right and, and mind you i mean we're speaking we're speaking from the perspective of introverts but i actually don't think that 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 is um that, that I, I think extroverts also sometimes need quiet space to yes. be able to focus now yes. they might be able to focus with headphones on and playing music or whatever like i personally can't do that no um but i know there are people that can but they still need that that stillness they do right they really yeah. do yes 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 okay so then we want to be able to stay in our shell right sis yes you, like, you want to talk just, about this just, just let us, just let us stay in our shell. So first of all, stop asking us to come out of our shell and telling us that we need to get out of our shell more and get out more and do all of that. No, we do not. We're we fine. talked about exactly. this before. There we are, right? Yeah. We've talked about this before several times, but you know, working from home lets us stay in our shell, um, and which also helps us to, you know, basically speak less, write more, again, be more productive. And focus, focus on results instead of like trying to perform productivity. You know, you know how it is. Yes. You're in the, in the cubicle farm and you're trying to look busy. You're trying to look busy. Yeah, we all know either we have done it or other people have done it. Now, there are there are certain people and personality types that do this more than others. Right. Where they, I don't know how some people get work done. They spend all day talking and yelling and on, you know, sort of on the on the on the phone and you know waiting until and and you know i've been in meetings with people where they're on their laptop shopping right (laughs) yeah shopping but because they're on their laptop they look busy whereas the person that is not on a laptop uh, that might actually be paying attention hello 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 um supposedly looks like less busy and um and is penalized actually yes 
and it's yes. penalized. Yes, I've had this is. happen more and than once. Can I just segue into yeah. saying that that is also <laughs> that is also a racist thing. Because no black person is going to be sitting there shopping on their laptop if they know what's good for them. It's not going to happen. So they're not performing productivity. They're going to be actually paying attention. And then they will be penalized for supposedly not being as invested as the person that's shopping on their laptop. I I remember, and I this has this happened to me um, in that same company that shall remain nameless. This happened to me. Uh where and okay. The way my workstation was set up, mo- most people had laptops, but I did not. That's right. its own. That's its own discussion. <laughs> we're not going to get into why the black girl did not have a laptop, but fine. We're just going to leave that, right? <laughs> but so I did not have a laptop. But I remember uh, once we were doing some horrible group think project, right? And somebody that had a laptop was able to basically get an answer to a question super quickly because they're on their laptop and they have access to Google, Mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, they kept shooting their hand up with responses and da, 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 da. And it's like, okay, well, and my boss actually said to me, well, you should be more like X person, you know, and participate more and have some answers and be, and be more responsive, be more responsive and respond more quickly. And I said, They can respond quickly because they looked up the answer on Google because Mm -hmm. they have a laptop, which I don't. Of course, I should not have said that. (laughs) Okay, well. Yes, but anyway, all all we're saying is, all we're saying is working from home is not going to eliminate that, those kinds of instances, but it certainly will reduce them. Absolutely. We want to be, we, you know, we want to be unapologetic about our bubble. We want to be comfortable, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we will do our best work that way. You know, this is why so many companies have found that their productivity, their output, their revenue has gone up with people working from home because the people that enjoy the work from home life are able to do their best work. And, you know, we're not saying, we're not saying that, that, you know, everybody has to work from home. We're not saying no. that, you know, let's, no. let's adopt a hybrid model built on choice. Yeah. Hybrid built on choice. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Um, you know, I, and I agree with you, not everyone, not every role can be performed remotely, obviously. I, I mean, I, I get that. Right. Yeah. Uh, but for the ones that can let people, let people choose, you know, and, and for, for introverts, you know, it, it lets us be our, authentic selves be more relaxed which is ultimately going to help us to be more productive uh, without the pressure to to conform to what uh, especially in the u.s is the extroverted norm like we don't have to conform to that as much yes yes there is still some of it there is still some of it because you know we still have video calls that's its own beast then we've covered that (laughs) as well but you know the, the the pressure definitely is is reduced and you know, of course, you and I, there's intersectionality between us being introverts and being black women, right? Of course. And, and that and brings its remember, own issues. That's its own issues. That, that has its own issues. And I don't remember where I saw the statistic, but I did see one that said only 3% of black professionals, <laughs> as opposed to percentages in the high double digits for, for white professionals, right? Want to return 3% to the office. Want to return to the office. 3% of black wow. professionals. Right. And yeah. um, that that's is a quite very, something. that is a very, very telling uh, statistic. What, what statistic? Why do you, why do you think that is? Well, you know, it's funny because I don't think any black person would, any black person, re, uh, you know, reading that statistic will nod knowingly. Right. Because we know what it's like. And as black women in particular, I mean, mm-hmm. some of the things are apply to all black professionals. For right, black women, right. one of the big things is misogynoir, avoiding mm-hmm. that, that mix of yeah. racism and sexism that targets black women, mm-hmm. right? That makes places unsafe space for you, spaces for you. You know, yeah. that, that um, assumption, twin assumptions of um, hypersexuality and incompetence, <laughs> basically, uh-huh. right? Yes. Yeah. Which yeah. really do you no favors at all they make you know they make it hard for you to 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 be your authentic self 
they mean that the deck is stacked against you right from the get-go, right? Right. And I right. think we've all experienced that. Oh, absolutely. You know, that and the, the you know, microaggressions, um, which, <sighs> among other things, can include people uh, commenting on and touching your hair. Oh, yes. uh, people asking, uh, so where are you from? No, where are you really from? Uh, it, people... Doubting I've, your I've qualifications. Had, yes. Your qualifications right. and your and and your and your output, frankly, and your expertise, you know, like, and your expertise. You know, yes. people asking you, well, you know, how how did how did you get how did you get that um that uh, that that project? How did you end up getting that project? Which which mind you, I mean, we've seen that play out recently in the whole ESPN fracas, right? Yes, we have. Where basically, basically, this you know, white um, professional is suggesting the only reason why. A black woman who has been in, and I'm, I'm, of course I'm forgetting names because we didn't plan to discuss this, right? Yeah. But the, you know, the the other black black uh, ESPN uh, host has been doing has been working for over a decade. But the white what the the white her white colleagues um, analysis is well, you know, she only got that job because she's black. So there's no other reason. She, the implication being that there's. She has no expertise. She's not professional. She's not good enough. She's just black and she's a talking head. And that's it. And let's, let's, let's just throw in there, uh, speaking of things we hadn't planned to talk about, Nicole Hannah-Jones and UNC. And, and the fact that they had to have their arm twisted to offer her tenure when let's, she let's was better with... qualified than anybody else. Any had... of them. Right? Any but of them. No. Actually, actually, the person who started the whole um, sort of inquest, mm -hmm. right? Which was a corporate lynching, let's be clear. Yes. Let's be clear. So the person who started this attempted corporate lynching was not even, uh, definitely not qualified, but was not supposed to even be involved in the process. Yes. Was not yes. supposed to be involved in the process, but because they had white male privilege and a lot of money, they inserted themselves into the process. People allowed them to yep. insert themselves into yep. the process. And, and they're, and you see- Patriarchy and, strikes again. Patriarchy strikes again. Um, Misogynoir Noir strikes again. And of course this played out on a national scale, but the, this is the kind of thing that we have to deal with just uh, you know, in our regular jobs, day exactly. in and exactly. day out. Yeah. That, was, that was our, you know, our, daily, our daily round writ large. I oh, am yeah. very happy that she actually decided to go to Howard and take her chair with her. Yes. And that she yes. said, I refuse. Yeah. I refuse. But, you yeah. know, we no doubt we may come back to this issue another time because that could be a sounds, whole episode on it. Sounds own. like another episode <laughs> in the offing. Yes, for sure. For sure. So, okay. so again, as, as Black women, working from home helps us to avoid all of that. It helps us to avoid... Also, this is something that you have covered, the lonely, loneliness of being the only black employee. Yes. So yes. this is, this, I know this is near and dear to your heart. So do you want to? Girl, uh, you know, it's just, you know, when you are the only one, there is no one to turn to, no one who understands the experience you are going through. And sometimes you start to wonder, well, am I, am I actually imagining all of this, all of this racism, all of these microaggressions, all of this, 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 coded, this, this coded exclusion? Mm -hmm. You know, but the truth is that we're not because, you know, there are a lot of us who are the only one experiencing it in our, in our context. But when you start, you get together with people and you start talking, you realize that it's happening to all of us. Yeah. Right. And that I think, though, that that's almost part of um, us, all part of the structure, all part of the system. It is. I, I, I'm sure you remember that there's a company that I worked at that had an objection to uh, black employees having lunch together. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. And so, and so how, how they had it structured was for the most part, if you, you know, you were a black employee, you were probably the only on your team. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they made it uncomfortable. Uh, so of course you didn't have any sort of backup, so to speak, wow. any sort of support on your team. And then they made it uncomfortable for you to have any social backup beyond that uh, by making it, uh, basically, this unwritten uh, rule, you know, uh, this this cold war would go on if ever, you know, if there were like three black people speaking like 
<laughs> wow. There were repercussions and ramifications to that. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Well, so, but they, but they want it that way. They want it, they want it that way because they want you unstable, unsupported, unsettled, and unable to form any kind of a coalition and and um self self advocate self advocate yes and so that is all that is all about white fragility now you know that's a whole other yes. and a whole other thing about you know about white fragility and the fact that robin d'angelo is profiting on Woo-hoo! from her anti racism work and she's Do bringing out know? a new book called nice racism and you know it's like she's making coin while black people are st- who are experts struggling. in this are still struggling. I don't think we should even get into that because we will never end. But let us well, come back to I, that I another just, time. I just, <laughs> I just want to, I do want to talk about it because I actually woke up this morning. Um, I didn't sleep well last night, mm-hmm. side note. And so I woke up, you know, in the wee hours of the morning thinking about that. I'm like, but look at the, look at the caucasity of this, right? And look yes. at how this system is set up because for all of the people that are rebelling against critical race theory and you know that whole that whole argument and and basically trying to deny that systemic racism uh, exists right yeah it's like the mere fact that a white woman is the top she's the number one seller and the number one expert in racism arrant caucasity caucasity but that just speaks to how the system is set up yes right Yes. That just speaks to how the system is set up. Not even black people are allowed to be experts in racism. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, that is just mind blowing. But let's move on because let's you know that's move a on. whole let's side on. note. Okay. We don't want the tone policing. We don't want yeah. the, you know, we don't want the tone policing. We don't want people right, to be like, so angry. You sound you sound aggressive. Yes, exactly. You know, just for being ourselves. We talked about hair. Did we talk about code switching? We did not. We did not. But working from home as, you know, black women and, and as introverts, because there's the, the introvert code switch is to pretend extroversion. Yes. All yes. of this. Yes. Right. And, oh yes. my gosh. Yes. I'm so excited to see you guys. Let's hang out. No, let's yes. not. I don't want to hang out. I don't want to <laughs> do happy hour. I don't want to do any of that. But also the code switching in term in terms of race of, uh, you know, changing, changing your vocabulary choices, changing your hair, changing choices, your demeanor, changing your demeanor. Right? You know, you Making kind of sure hold yourself in so that you're less than yourself. You make yourself, order. you, 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 you make yourself smaller. You, it's it's you like do. back in the day, it's like back in the day when you had to move off onto the street to allow white people and especially white women Right, you and I have talked about this yes. to be able to walk because you weren't supposed to cross paths with them. Yes, and you, you know, and in a our way, ancestors had to lower their gaze, slump their shoulders, move over, you know, basically shift lanes, get out of the. And white, we're still white doing that, lane, and we're still doing it, and we do it a lot at work. Yes, you know, and and that that is a form of code switching, and it's it's exhausting, it is demoralizing. And, um, and we don't want to have to do it anymore, basically. No. And, and so- all of that, everything that we've just mentioned plays into uh, mental health. Yes, yes. Right? Because it's stressful. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah. you know, sometimes we're so used to doing it that we don't realize how stressful it is until we don't have to do it. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think that a lot of that, those people, those 97% of Black people, have suddenly realized that, you know, there's another way. They don't have to go through this daily stress and they can just do their jobs Mm -hmm. and they can limit their interactions and they can avoid all of these things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and also they don't have to be out on those streets taking their lives in their hands. This applies mainly to black men, right? But not not exclusively, right? Mm -hmm. So they can actually protect themselves. They can prioritize their, their family life without being slated for it. Because there's always a way in which it's okay for some people to do that and not for others, right? Right. Right. Well, you know, they like us to be the nannies, but not to take care of our own children. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I said it. I said it, I said it, I said it. <laughs> Don't at me. <laughs> Networking. Networking. Do we need, yeah, do we I, need more I, after work happy hours? 
We do not. Okay, here's the thing. I can see the benefit. The, there is there is benefit to networking. I'm not saying that one should never network. Um, what I'm speaking about here is the uh, what I call the pointless networking, the enforced <laughs> right? networking, the forced the forced networking, and. Oh. Uh, you know, sometimes there's this office culture where like, let, let's say every Thursday or every Friday, an entire um, group goes out, goes out to whatever bar or whatever, whatever, right? Yeah. Um, and if you don't participate every single Friday, then you are sort of um, excluded from the group, right? Because people choose to not see your humanness and not recognize that you, you might actually genuinely have something else to do, or it's Friday. I'm tired. Yeah. You know, I just want to go home and your way, your way of winding down might be to have a drink. Well, I don't, I don't drink alcohol. My way is to go home again to my bubble. Right. <laughs> and so, yeah. And so, you know, it's sort of just giving people, giving people grace and not having, to, not having to get into that whole struggle of, you know, if I don't go to this networking event, if I don't attend mm -hmm. this function, then I can say goodbye to a raise. I can say goodbye yes. to a promotion. I it's can say goodbye yeah. to uh, this juicy project that, that is coming up. It's going to right? count against you. It's going to count against you. Again, we're realistic. Look, we know that, uh, you know, that actually is still going to happen. Again, mm -hmm. the working from home situation has just reduced it. Yes. Uh, reduce the the frequency and reduced um you know i i guess how how intense it is the intensity of it right yes related yeah. to that mm -hmm. uh culture building and team building activities yeah yeah again i don't want to go i don't want to go and shoot paintball with you i i honestly <laughs> do not not now not ever it will never happen i will never want to do that because of course you know for black people especially those existing as the only one in their particular team or in their particular office, you know, it's another, it's another point of difference. You know what I mean? It's another thing where, you know, this might not be something that you have participated in before, or maybe it has and you don't like it, but you know, if you, if you're not all in, then it is perceived as a big negative. Right. Yeah. And you know, my yeah. thinking is whereas, oh, whereas I am professional sometimes... and could do my work, and, you know, I get on, you know, I have, you know, adequate contact with people. Do I really need to be, to participate in a culture building activity? No. No. <laughs> no, no. So I'm just, just, you know, let, let people be. Just let yes. people be, right? Yeah. Um, and all, another thing that is, is I, I guess it's basically a, a reiteration of what you just said, but working from, from home, working remotely lets us be, um, professional on our terms, as opposed to having to fit uncomfortably into spaces that uh, are not built for us, yes. um, and that are, you know, defined by white, white supremacy, you know, like who gets to decide who gets to decide what's professional. Exactly. Right? I'm already we... planning. Let me just tell you, I mean, you see my hair now, right? Yes. Right. I, I, I have, I have some, um, I'm planning my next set of braids is going to be like mermaid braids. Okay. You know, sort of a nice, yes. uh, purpley, lilac -y, pinky yeah. thing. And yeah, I'm going to work with it like that. Yes. Right. For example, you know, um, because it makes no I'm difference going to be... your ability to do your right. job, to your expertise, to your ability, to your professionalism. Yes. You know? And None to say it. that it does is just flat out wrong. Yeah, know? I'm still I'm still going to, no matter what my hair looks like, I'm still going to be professional. No matter what my clothing looks like, I'm still going to be professional. Now, I will probably, I guess based on my, um, my age or when I, when I grew up, I still think that there are limits. <laughs> <laughs> Let me yes. explain. Let me, no. I don't necessarily, um, for me, I don't know that I'm ever going to show up to the office in a pair of booty shorts or what. I mean, if I did, I would still be able to write like a superstar. Yes. Right? Yes. It but is that is your personal, personal choice. It is not my personal choice so. not to show up, not to show up in the office 
to the office in a pair of booty shorts. But again, if people want to, they should be able to, right? Yes. Yes. Um, I should not. And, and even though, like I said, I've decided how that I'm still going to wear my hair however I want. But the fact that I have to even give it thought, I don't want to no. have to do that. No, no. There's still an element of pressure. There's still an element of pressure, right? Yes. And so, yeah, basically, you know, we want to be able to uh, enforce our boundaries, enjoy our space in ways that are safe and, and um, pleasurable for us, avoid judgment. We do. And just be, we do. Yeah, just be able to be, be professional um, on our terms, produce on our terms, excel on our terms. I'm looking at you, Shakari Richardson. I'm like, first of all, <laughs> right? If, okay. you, if that's how you performed after, after having a little bit of weed, I'm like, well, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, wow, well, well, God, yes. God bless so, you. So please don't make us go back to the office. Please. No, don't. Please let us continue don't. to enjoy being introverted at home and produce our best work at home and be our best selves at home. And your office will be the better for it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and oh. mind you, mind you, I also think, I, I do foresee uh, there's going to be a, a mass exodus. When, when people, when, you know, statisticians and sociologists and whatever look back, you know, 10, five, 10 years hence, they're going to see, you know, the wave of people moving, uh, change, changing jobs because people are going to be like, okay, fine. Uh, keep your hybrid job. I'm going to find me a fully remote job. Yes. Or and, whatever. You know, there yeah. are, and, and, and companies will have to follow. There are yeah. more, yeah. there are a lot of remote only companies already. Mm -hmm. And people, they're going to find that they are in demand. Yeah, yeah. You know, so be it. So be it. Right. Well, that has been a, another rollicking discussion. <laughs> Thank you for listening. And we will catch you on the next episode. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Introvert Sisters. Loved what you heard? You can catch all our episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and all other major platforms. Subscribe, rate, and write a review. Find us online at theintrovertsisters.com and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Introvert Sisters. See you next time. Peace.